Number five, the one thing you can't do is you can't go x minus 2 equals 22. Right? Like, because we usually do x minus 2 equals 0, but you can't do that. So what we're focusing on today is working on, oh, bugs. Sorry, that's my really bad word. Okay, I have to do something over here before I can move the 22 over. So I would do x squared minus 2x plus 7x minus 14 equals 22. See how I did that? Yeah, you then I need to combine. So that gives me x squared plus 5x minus 14. Now what do you want to do with that 22? Subtract it over equals 0. Now what do I have to combine? Negative 14 and negative 22 is negative 36 equals 0. And then that gives me, multiply to give me negative 36, add to give me 5. Okay, she said negative 9, oh, she means positive 9, negative 4. This answer is going to be x plus 9 equals 0, which gives me a negative 9. And this one is x minus 4 equals 0, which gives me a positive 4. Now, do I get rid of either of these two answers? No. I'm not trashing them because this is not about length or width or that type of thing. Okay? All right, so we have n and n plus 2, which are consecutive even integers. If they were odd, you'd still do n plus 2 because what's the difference between two odd numbers? Two. And what if it said consecutive integers? One. Then it'd be one. Okay, so I'm going to go n times n plus 2 is equal to 24. So that's n squared plus 2n. Do y'all take another step to do the 24 or do you just move it right now? Just move it? I just usually go minus 24 equals 0. Then I need to factor. Multiply to give me 24, add to give me 2, which is positive 6 and negative 4. And then my solutions are going to be negative 6 and positive 4. But wait, that doesn't help me because those are not consecutive. What's the next consecutive number with negative 6? Negative 4. There's one pair of numbers that, that are consecutive even and that multiply to give me 24. The 4, what's the next consecutive even that multiplies to give me 24? 6. So you've got two answers. So you have to have both, okay? All right, next one. All right, the first thing I did was draw a rectangle, and I have 3, whoops, 3w three minus 1 and w. Then I need to multiply those. W times 3W minus 1 is equal to 310. Now, again, do you see how the left-hand side I have to distribute? So that gives me 3W squared minus W. If it's okay, I'm going to go ahead and do minus 310 equals 0. Did everybody get to there? Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to give you one this big without the nice yellow calculator. So I'm going to slip and slide this, which gives me w squared minus w minus 930 equals 0. Can you think of two numbers that are one apart that gives me 930? 30 and 31. Which one's negative? 31's negative. 30 is positive. This answer, oh, bad teacher. Then I have to slide the 3 back. Uh-oh. So that gives me W plus 30 over 3. And hold on. That's a, that's a 10. <laughs> w plus 10 and W minus 31 over 3. If you want to make it 10 and 1 third, you could. Okay, so... This 10 gives me a negative 10. Can I use that since I'm talking about width and length? I'll trash it. And then the second answer is 31 over 3, which is 10 and 1 third if you want. Now look at the problem. It says find the dimensions, and that's plural. We just found well, the width. Oh. Because it can't be 
the length and width can't be negative. Oh, what's up with that? Stop it. There it is. That's the width. So now I need to take my width, plug it in for W right here so I can find my length. And this works out very nicely. 3 times 31 over 3 take away 1. All the answers will be small. Cross off the 3's. 31 take away 1 is 30. So my dimensions are 30 and 10 and 1 third. Or 30 and 31 thirds. In the original problem, it says one foot less than three times the width. All right, so I put this equal to zero. I'm going to do a greatest common factor, which is negative 5t. On the inside, that gives me t minus 6 equals zero. Now, see this negative 5t? If it has a variable, that's going to give me a zero answer, which is the starting of when the rocket was let off. Okay? And this one's going to be t minus 6 equals zero, so t equals 6. And what does that represent? When it hits the ground. What if I ask you, when was the time of the highest point? What would you say? Three. Because this is starting from the ground, it's going to go up and come back down for six seconds. So the halfway point is three. You might have questions like that. Okay, number nine. All right, so I'm going to use this formula. I have one half the height, and the height is x. Parentheses, base one is x plus four. <clears throat> Base 2 is x. So what, happen, what do I get when I add x plus x plus 4? 2x plus 4. And that whole thing is supposed to equal 48. But that can go into x squared because 2 can be x. Yeah. Uh-huh. So now I'm going to distribute half of 2 is 1. And what's x times x? Uh -huh. x squared. Half of half x plus four is two x. What do you want to do with the forty-eight? Minus forty-eight equals zero. Okay, then I need to factor. This is not slip and slide. X, x, multiply to give me forty-eight, it's negative. Six and eight. Which one's positive? Eight's positive. 6 is negative. I know what y'all are thinking. You're thinking ahead. Yeah. This solution gives me negative 8, and I'm going to chunk it in the trash because my distance can't be negative. This answer gives me 6. The, uh, we had to find the length of the shorter base. Did we do that? Yes, it's 6. All right, the large rectangle is going to be x minus 4 times x plus 3, which is x squared minus x minus 12. You have to distribute, foil, all that business. Is that the area? That's the area of the larger. Okay, the little one is what? 3x. Now I have to find the area of the shaded part. So I'm going to do x squared minus x minus 12, and then what do I do with the 3x? Subtract 3x. So that gives me x squared minus 4x minus 12. Then it tells me to that the area of the shaded region is 48. So what do I let it equal? 48. Equal 48. Again, do you see how we had to do something to the left side of the equation before we could go on? Now I have to move the 48. And that gives me x squared minus 4x minus 60. Oh, that one's easy. I got that one. Multiply to give me 60, add to give me 4. 10 times? 10 times 6. 10 times 6 is 60, the add to give me 4. So which one do you want to go with the negative and which one's positive? Negative 10, positive 6. Okay, this x minus 10 gives me 10. 
The x plus 6 gives me negative 6. Would you like to throw one of them away? Negative 6. And so did we find, it, find the final answer? Yes. x is 10. Okay, so I have to find the, oh. Okay, now we're going to do this um, number 58, which is actually the 11th problem. We're just going to do the part that is marked B here. Okay, we have to find the length of each leg of an isosceles right triangle. So this A and this B are both the same. How about we call them X? Okay, we have to, this in the hypotenuse here is 10. So if we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared, that gives me X squared plus X squared equals 100, which is 2X squared equal to 100. Dividing both sides by 2, X squared is 50. When I take the square root of each side, it gives me 7.07. .07. But since this tells me to round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to change that to 7.1. Whoops, 7.1 centimeters. Okay, this is number 12, and I believe this is the last one. We have a photo that shows a thatched house in Santana Madeira in Portugal. The front of the house is a triangle. The base is one less than its height. So my base is going to be H minus one, and the area is 15. So I'm going to use uh, base times height divided by two. The base is H minus one, the height is H and divide by 2, and then that area is 50. So I don't need this formula sitting right here anymore. Okay, then I need to distribute. So that's h squared minus h all over 2 equals 15. Now I'm going to multiply by 2 on each side to clear my fractions, and I get h squared minus h equals 30. These twos cancel. And then I need to move the 30 over, so h squared minus h minus 30 equals 0. Factoring that, it gives me h minus 6 and h plus 5 equals 0. The h minus 6 give me, gives me the answer of 6, and the h plus 5 gives me the answer of negative 5. Now, I can't use this negative 5, but I can use the 6. The final answer to this is 6 meters. All right, that's all for now, and I'm going to make another video of 1 through 4 since it messed up yesterday. Y'all have a great evening. I will be here Thursday morning at 6.30 in the morning and Thursday after school from 2.30 to 3.15. Friday morning is 6.40 with round edible objects. See y'all later.